the No, no Limiter, Limiter Podcast. Podcast. Where we interview top business owners, entrepreneurs, and creators in every industry to help you set record breaking, breaking months. months. Here's your host of the No Limiter Podcast, Regina Eileen Woodard. Good afternoon, or well, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to the No Limit Podcast. I'm your host, Regina, the queen of car loans and credit. And today I am interviewing my guy, my younger brother from another mother, right? David. Tavares. Tavares, all the way yes. in Queens, New York. Absolutely. You, you're, you're part of my, um, we're part of the podcast family with David Snans. It's the, the podcast challenge group. And yes. That's how we met at first. There was a lot of interesting and entrepreneurial type of people in there. It was very, very, a very good group. I like them. Give a lot of informative gems to but we did. that podcast. Mm-hmm. It was um it was five days, right? We had five days. It was five days, correct. Were you on all five days? Um, I wasn't on the first uh first day, but I was on every day after that. And um, you know, shout out to David and Sleepers for Suckers is his Instagram. And his uh name is David Snatch, right? That's how it looks. You know what? I mess up a last name all the way, right? The the great thing about what I learned from the podcast that week, one of the huge things um I learned was the network, the people, yes. um, and and trying to step out of my lane, right? Getting out of my own way to get to know people. And Perfect. you were the first podcast that I was on after we had the podcast challenge. So, so I said, once I start my journey, that I wanted to have you on my podcast. And you're not a guinea pig. You are a part of my beginning because- A part of your legacy. Yes. But you know, I did- um, I did Facebook Live, you know, I do radio. So actually doing the podcast is really, really something new, but you get to know the person, you know, you get to know because David, I know you're a podcaster, you're a salesman at Verizon, and then you just got your real estate license. You wearing a lot of hat, but I also know that you have your podcast and I got, I got it written down here. It's Pretty Lie Ugly True Podcast Channel. Let's talk a little bit about that. Where did that name come from? All right. So, um, you know, what's funny. It originally came from a song. A lot lot of the ideas that are birthed from music for me. It was Joe Buttons. He said a line in the song and it was like, would you rather give me you the pretty lie or ugly truth? And when he said that, I was like, man, that, that resonated with me so much because we're living in a time where everybody's more wannabes, right? Like everybody says they do something, but they don't really do it. You know, a lot of people pretend. So there's a lot of people selling information like real estate, uh, car tourro, and they're not actually doing, like they're not in the process. So I see a lot of people being like teachers, but not really having the experience or nothing like that or actually doing it. So what I realize is that we have to bring more truth to the forefront, right? I want to be more transparent. I don't want to be somebody standing by a car that I don't own. I don't want to be teaching information that I never done myself. You know what I mean? Like you're a perfect example of the truth, right? You actually are in the car business. You've been there for a long time. You've been on every single side, I'm pretty sure. And now you're the queen of loans, and car sales. And um, this whole thing just started because uh, really like a long time ago, I was in a bad breakup and I kept talking about relationships. It's funny that you're saying, you know, you so you believe everybody needs to birth, but they're going to do something. They need to birth. They need to have go have experienced it. Correct. In order to yeah. be able to live it. Mm-hmm. You got you got me on the edge of the seat because now you said that. OK, so you, you started it because of you said a bad relationship, you said. Yeah, the, the idea of the podcast was relationships first, right? It started as relationships and stuff like that. And um, I found myself constantly talking about relationships. And I'm like, you know, this is not doing nothing for me. So I said, let me capture it in a way that everybody could feel my pain and relate to it. 
So I tried it out with my, my boy one time. We did it in the living room. It wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, I said we needed more, we needed girls, right? Because we need the females' opinion. So we started adding girls and stuff like that. The first episode is um, on YouTube. If you type in Cinematic Brothers and you go to YouTube, my first episode is there. So you're definitely going to see the growth from episode one all the way to episode uh, 13 for the first season because now I'm on season two. And I, I say pretty loudly, true podcast 2.0 because we fixed the sound. The aesthetics of the, the podcast is better than before because I had a lot of complaints about sound, the visuals, this, this, and that. And I wanted to try to make it perfect. You know what I mean? So what's changed between that? What, what, what growth do you see? Yeah, I realized that um, I needed the right equipment to make sure that I had the right sound because the thing is, is that when somebody's listening to the podcast, if it's audio or visual, the sound has to be on point because, you know, most of the time people have their headphones on or they're at work. So I'm just trying to give them the best quality. So I would say the aesthetics have changed as far as the sound and the visuals. That's what's really changed. The content has always been there. Like you could actually do a podcast on your phone, right? But if your content is good, you could do very well. You don't have, to, right. spend, you don't have to spend that much money on cameras. But me, I'm real picky with my stuff. Like I, I take criticism and I go back to the lab and I'm like, let's fix this. What we got to do? What we got to buy? You know what I mean? Because I'm trying to make this perfect. Like, you know, at first I started doing short films, but then I was like, this podcasting, it's quick. It's fast. You could get people on. You could network. And it's easy. You could be by yourself. You know what I mean? A lot of the times we have to depend on this production and cameraman. We could just do this Zoom call and I don't got to depend on anybody. You know what I mean? But um, <laughs> to answer your question, the aesthetics have changed. Yes. So Pretty Lot Ugly True Podcast channel. You said it came from a relationship, right? And you pass right. it on to your friend and... Mm -hmm. How do you come up with some topics? Let's talk some topics, right? Because when I listen to it and you guys were talking about relationships and things you went through, yeah. do people actually share, are they sharing personal information? Is this, I mean, yes. is this the That's... truth from the heart or are we just making up right. something? Right. Somebody came on my show the other, the other day and one of the girls was speaking very vulgar and, and like, you know, her, her heart. And he asked her, he's like, are you being for real right now? And, and she's like, yeah, like, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, I've been around some girls that are really tough, right? Let's say, like, we're from New York, right? We have, like, a dark sense of humor. Like, you know, we, um, you know, we come from that. So uh, none of this stuff is, is uh, scripted. All of it's organic. And it's all personal experiences. And what's crazy is the element on my show, what I use is obviously we have some wine and liquor to open people up, Right. And then I have this one particular girl, her name is China, and she's a female. She's very open about whatever she speaks about. So having her there allows everybody else to be comfortable and speak. You know what I mean? So why? Why do you think why do you think having her there? I think the females looking at another female speak like that, it makes them comfortable and open up. And what I've been realizing is I know some of these people for years that come on my show, some of them, and they open up like a Pandora's box sometimes. I'm like, wow, like I didn't think that they would open up that deep, but it's almost like therapy for people is what I'm seeing. Like this, this podcast is changing. It went from like relationships, but now it's like more like mental health therapy and looking for solutions. And then that's why I kind of morphed. Like I wanted, it started by relationships, but I'm like, okay, but in a relationship, there's also financing. There's also parenting. You know what I mean? There's also mental health. Like all of it's together. It's all connected. So it sounds like your show is like therapy. You know, if, you, yeah. if you're if you sitting around at a table, right, and you got people talking and you're sharing information, you're sharing information that's coming from the heart. Right. You get some wine, you get some alcohol, that's going to make it, make you open up and it's just going to talk. It's just going to, people are going to let loose. Yes. And it, it sounds like it's therapy. And honestly, it sounds like anybody needs to have therapy. Right. I, and I think, um, you know, the last two, three years have shown us that we might all need some type of meditation or, or, or therapy or some type of way of venting and expressing ourselves. Because, you know, a lot of people are going through some tough times in the last three or four years. And uh, we had to, like, actually sit back and self-reflect on a few things. Uh, what, where am I in my life? How can I do better? 
you know, what can I change? You know what I mean? And, and that's what I'm going to start blogging on and stuff like that, because I'm, I'm hitting pain points and all the content is coming from females from everywhere. Like, you know, some of them are not even on the show, but they give me material by sending me DMs, text messages. Oh, I like that topic. So the material's coming organically, honestly, like people call me. And, and sometimes when I talk to people, it's like they talk to me as if they're on an audition. You know what I mean? Like they want me to hear these things now. So right. it's becoming like I'm the therapist in a way. You know what I mean? And, and it's getting yeah, kind of yeah. crazy because everybody wants to tell me about their relationship now, like as if I'm a doctor. So that's so, what it's turning so, into. So the doctor, if you want, you birth this. So what happened in a relationship with you that make you want to birth your your podcast because that's how you birth it let's let's get deep here yeah let's get deep yeah nobody ever asked me that question it's going to get a lot of people telling but um okay so it was my baby's mother my son's mother right we had a crazy breakup you know we tried or whatever five years we've been broken up for five years but the way what i realized is that you have to put your career and everything first and what i ended up doing i was putting her first because I was a young man at the time when I first dated her, right? I was like 24, 10 years like later, you know? So what happened with that situation was is that I realized that a relationship could really affect your whole career. Like it'll, a bad relationship, a toxic relationship would affect your work. You know how they say, don't bring your personal problems to the job? You know, yes. and, and I felt like it was affecting me mentally. Like I couldn't function. I was I couldn't finish my projects and stuff like that. And I realized that everybody at some point in time has been in a situation where their relationship has affected their career. You know what I mean? And I don't want that to happen to anybody else because it's like the second, like I believe in catering to your woman and, and making sure you support her in every single way possible that we could think of. But the second that you put a woman first before everything, before God, before all of that, your whole life could possibly fall apart, depending on that person, who that person is too, right? But I just seen every time I did projects or something like that, even my film projects, you know, I'll call like somebody that's supposed to be on set. Oh, I'm, I just broke up with my girl. I'm not feeling too well. Oh, I'm going through this, through that. And, and a relationship really holds people back. You know, and, and even the influences of their partner, like sometimes your partner not, might not give you the best advice, but you're taking it because that's your partner. Right. So the, the reason I did that podcast was because I wanted to speak about my problems and I wanted to see if I was the only one. I thought maybe like I was I was the wrong guy, like maybe I was doing something wrong. But I realized that I was wrong in some parts, but there was things that I was right on, too. You know what I mean? And I wanted to be that person that wasn't afraid to speak up and, and to talk about things that everybody else is afraid to talk about, you know? So therapy. So yeah, like, like social therapy. media and social media, we put our best foot forward, right? Mm -hmm. We're never showing the pains unless you're like that depressed person that's always complaining. But, you know, I just think that everybody puts their best foot forward and I just wanted to show um, that I was human. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I could get girls, this and that. I, I got everything I want. But at the end of the day, there's people that have money that are depressed. You know, there's people that, that are billionaires or millionaires that committed suicide. And why is that? You know, what is it that makes them feel that way? You know what I mean? And, um, it's, and, and what it is, is there's certain things you can't buy. You know what I mean? There's yeah. certain things you can't buy. And when you figure out how to just, like, stop trying to control stuff, control the controllable, you'll be fine. You know what I mean? So at least it's, it's not that you say that, you know, when you talk about, you know, it's people with money, billionaires, millionaires with money that have issues, right? Um, I can't think of her last name right now. Um, you know, I've been Kate following Spade. her. I'm sorry? <laughs> I was going to say Kate Spade. That's what somebody no, no, no. Um, I've been following her her whole career. Her name is Regina. Her, her um, I can't think of her last name, but her son just committed suicide last week. Oh, the actor. Yes, the actor. The actor, yes. yes. Wow. And so you you would think, you know, it's people from the outside just looking in, right? And you can't see what's going on. You know, the caliber of mothers that she is, the caliber of person that she is, you know, for what I've read, that she was there for her son. You know, she would not take roles 
in certain films, it, it took away from her son for so, you know, wow. for, for a long time. So she dedicated a lot of time with him and a lot of time that she spent in the limelight to celebrate what she was doing when she got awards or whatever she did, she took her son. You know, she didn't always That's take awesome. dates, you know, That's and to, to, to see that he committed suicide. So that I guess the bottom line, what I'm saying is you have to have therapy no matter what. Yeah. You know, how you get the therapy is on you, but being able to get yourself in another stage of your life or grow, you know, if you went through a certain situation, you got to be able to have therapy. So yeah. you did some, you, your birthing has, um, you birthing this podcast is really strong. You know, I don't know if I could get on there and talk about relationships. I guess maybe if I have like a couple yeah. of drinks. There's that gig, exactly, right? It's Give like me a couple of drinks and you, I'm there. I'm sure, right? Regina, there'll be a topic where you're like, hold on, let me, let me tell you about that. You know what I mean? There's, there's topics that people were like, nah, I don't want to answer that question. You know what I mean? And also I'm very careful with the people that I know that are married. I know what questions not yeah. to ask them. You know, I, I always keep that in mind. Let's just put this in perspective. When you look at women that are um, about their careers right. and they're strong women, right? right? We have that certain category that we're in. Like we don't need anybody, you know? And, and so that's a good relationship topic right there. You yeah. have women on your show. Matter of fact, you invite me, right? Mm -hmm. And... And it's, we talk about strong black women, you know, being strong, you know, where, you know, we're about our career, we're the careerist first, and then, you know, and, and, and black men, black men, sometimes not being able to deal with that strong black woman. And how do you deal with it? Do you think that um, that kind of intimidates men that, that you're like the queen of loans and cars, like, I don't know your situation, but I'm just saying, like, don't you think that that would intimidate somebody? <laughs> Freaking hypothetically, that. right? Look, look, I bought that. I birthed that right when I said that, right? You did, so I'm going to answer did. it, and then I'm going to get in about you. So right. it's not about um, even before I was the queen, okay? It's the, you know, I was raised by my dad, and it's like, okay, it's like, you know, I want you to be able to pay your bills. I want you to be able to do this. I want you to be able to do that. You know, I'm not going to always be here. I want you to be an independent black woman. You know, he didn't say black, but he was like, I want you to be an independent woman. Wow. So he instilled, my mom and my dad instilled certain things in me as I grew up, right? How I was raised is how I am now on another level, right? You know, mainly being close to my father, he instilled a lot of ways into me, right? And I think that the Afro-American race, far as men, you know, they, you guys don't know how to deal with a strong woman. You know, not I all men. I heard that. I heard that before. Yeah. So that is a good topic. Like I said, when you have it, you have me on because, I mean, the black men need help on how do they deal with that strong black woman. I'm putting that topic down here because I like to notate. This is how I get my content. Like, literally. Yes. Like that. Yes. And then right away, I go into my notes and I yes. both put it in a section. Yes. Because that will be an episode that will help the younger generation and the older generation. I'm the older generation because you're in your 30s, but you're the younger generation to help you all understand, black men, understand that you can have a strong black woman. You know, and it, 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 you know, it's not like about, it's about race, but if you want a black woman, I can only speak a black woman because I'm a black woman. I can't speak for a white woman because I'm exactly. not a white woman. Exactly. But you really need to know how, how do you deal with a how do you deal with a strong black woman? You right. know, because it it it's and, and let me just say this, and I am going to move on. But you know, black women, they only thing they want, if they're the breadwinner, it's okay. As long as you you, you work together with that woman, it's Order not that. about how much money you make. It's not about whose bank account is bigger. You know, it's about how do you meet in between? But you have to be, the, the man has to be comfortable with himself yep. to be able to yeah, accept the black woman. You can't be insecure. Okay, we're gonna move on on back. Let me ask you a question. Um, <laughs> I saw that billboard you had, that big billboard. Where's that at? You have a billboard, right? You had a billboard. So that's, um, that's in Pontiac. Um, that's where I'm born and raised. 
and it's about cars. It's just getting people to come see me at the dealership or call. That's the call big. to action. Promo. That, that promo, that's that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. The call to action is to buy a car from the queen. That's the call to action. But yes, th thank you. But I did, I put that on social, you know, I put that on social media. And then, you know, the one thing about social media though, <laughs> David, is that, you know, people have one perception or not one, but people have perception of people on social media, how they are. And they really don't, they think some people act one way on social media, but then they're another way later. And the one thing about myself, let me just say, I'm the same one all the time. There's That's nothing. what I'm trying to say. Like these people are living like different lives. That's what I'm saying. There's yes. not enough truth out there. Yes. And, and people are like, I don't want to say wannabes, like, but you could literally search anybody and become them on the internet. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you could learn how to be somebody. I'm like somebody else, but not authentic, you know? And um, I, I agree with you. People are one way on social media and then in person, they're another way. I'm the same person all the time. I just got to tone, tone it down sometimes, depending where I'm at. Why well, do you say you got to tone it down? Because, um, you know, I ruffle a lot of feathers. I like to speak the truth. I don't like to kiss ass. I'm not that type to uh, join bands. I'm a Leo. I'm a Sorry? Leo. Uh, Leo? When's your birthday? August 20th. August 20th. I'm a, I'm a Leo, too. And uh, Leos don't. Uh, I'm July 25th. Oh, okay, and right there. Right, so Leos, we don't we don't hold our tongue. You know, no, we no. may hold it, we may hold it just a little bit. Yeah, you know? to be respectful. Right, right, but we're gonna give it to you in, yeah. in a nice way. So we we talked about your journey to the podcast world, but what what you know you you said you you sell at you know Verizon. Right. What, what's right. what's going on with the sales world? What what is your journey with the sales? Where where are you going with that? So because I know you're in real estate too now. Yeah, my thing is um, I'm doing the Verizon thing. It's a great nine to five, so many benefits, 401k, medical, all that stuff. I just love sales. I love the fact that I have a salary and commission. I can make more on top of what I'm doing. And I've always been into that, like uh, being able to make more money. I don't like working hourly and counting my hours. I'm, that's not my style. Verizon is, is uh, my first partner, let's say, like. I remember um, somebody was saying on another podcast, they were like, you know, a lot of people talk down on their nine to five, but their nine to five is actually their first partner, like their first investor, so, so to speak, right? Because those checks, you're investing into your stuff, your equipment, your computer, your studio time, your cameraman, whatever the case is. And, um, you know, I just needed a foundation, but now I just want to transition and, and, you know, I want to get paid what I'm worth. You know what I mean? Like, I need those bigger margins. I'm over here convincing people to, to buy this and buy that. It's the same concept if I do it with something at a, at a bigger margin. Like, it's the same amount of energy. Like, um, like on Earn Your Leisure podcast, they said, uh, you know, a million-dollar deal takes the same effort that a billion-dollar deal makes. The, uh, the same effort that a billion-dollar. So, like, if I'm sitting here talking, trying to negotiate with you, you know, I'm not doing nothing physical, right? Like, it's just talking. But if, if I do the same deal with somebody else, like the deal with you is a million, and the other deal with the person is a billion dollars, it takes the same amount of effort, right? So my thing, what I'm trying to say is, is that I'm trying to make more money. I want bigger margins. Um, you know, like, if, if I'm selling something that costs $1,000, let's just use 1000 for sake, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get just... $10 off of that. I think I should deserve a little more. I think maybe 60, 40, 70, 30, something like that um, is, is more, um, you know, to my liking. But what I realized in, in this retail game, they always change up the commission structure. So it's harder for you to attain to make money. Certain, certain spiffs. Yeah. Because, you know, in the beginning, when I was working in telecommunications, the people at the top, they didn't even know this was going to get like this, you know, because I started in like 08. And our commission checks oh, were wow. like, yeah, my commission checks were like 5,000, 6,000 at times, you know? And for selling phones, you know what I mean? Like, what? So, you know, I, I was in the game since Singular had a lock on iPhones, you know, and I had stocks with that at the time. So it's like, you know, I made money off that too. But um, that's, that's my whole horizon journey. I think that- Let me just back it up, back it up. That was a time I remember in, 
0506 where they charged you. It was no um, bundle. You know how you have two phones or three phones? And I had I have phones, right? But they charge you more. They made everything harder back back in 04, 05, 06. Right, right. And and it was so expensive to have a cell phone. I remember having six hundred dollar cell phone bills for three phones, right? right? Right. And it was just, and it was no, it was no buy your phone and then you pay for it for twenty four months. No or, yep. It was no financing. Why do you think the games changed so much? The amount of customers that started, you know, the business just basically got saturated. Everybody yes. was at this point. Yes. And they were like, oh, with this revenue coming in, we could afford to, you know, send out all these products. So I just I just think that the customers came like, you know, like a whole wave. And they were like, oh, you know, we're going to have all this revenue come in so we could spend that money now and, and you'll charge cheaper prices. But there's definitely there was numbers guys in there and stuff like that. Because I remember when I tried to buy a Nextel phone, I had to spend like a thousand dollars to just get a Nextel. You know what I'm saying? I remember that, next bell with the walkie talkie, right? Exactly. Exactly. We all, had to, we all had to have one of those. Yeah. And and I've been through that. But um, you know, now is that doesn't even exist. But you know, the phones are still expensive, but the thing is the game is saturated. So now that everybody has a phone, you know, it the commission is not the same, it's not coming in as much anymore. And um the only reason I see there's been a, a spike in sales. Is because of the pandemic is forcing everybody to use electronic devices and people are you know going to school from home and working at home and stuff like that so you say you say that the phone business saturated but you're in a real estate real estate is saturated you got real estate yeah. offices on every corner or and within a mile so how is that how is the business in real estate not saturated compared to sales you're right this is this is what i figured about real estate when I was younger, I always thought it was hard, right? Because it's like, oh, you got to go and get the money yourself. It's not like you get paid salary or whatnot. But what I realized, these, these real estate agents that I met in my earlier years, they weren't creative enough. You understand? There's different ways to sell a house and there's different ways to pitch the house. So me trying to be an entrepreneur, learning how to wholesale, trying to learn how to flip houses. There's so much going on, right? Um, I got with a guy named Jay Morrison, right? And that was back in like 2014. He was teaching the game of real estate and how to knock on doors and how to look at houses when they look like messed up. It could be like, oh, that's a distressed property. Let me reach out to the to the owner or whatnot and see if they want to sell it for, you know, on the market value. But I have my mother. She works in the title agency and my stepfather is a contractor. And like they're in the realm of real estate already, right? And then me, I've been trying to find a house for the last year and a half. I went to Jersey. I went to Boston. Wait a minute. How, how are you trying to find a house? There's plenty of houses um, in New York. What, what do you mean you're trying to find one? I, I'm not understanding that. Help me explain. The houses out here is way too expensive and you're not going to get that much space. So I've, I've been looking in places like New Jersey, which I'm familiar with. And then I went to Connecticut as well, because Connecticut's on the other side of New York and Jersey's on the other side. So I've been looking for a property for myself. The first property I'm trying to get, obviously, is like maybe three to four family, you know, because a lot of a lot of our culture or a lot of my, my Spanish culture, everybody jumped into a single home, right? On their first try, you know, when they could have been making money on those other apartments, right? And they never did that. Nobody ever taught me to get the first home, make sure it's it's a multifamily. And I, I didn't understand that till later on when I was like, okay, we could live in this for a year and then get out of here and get our own house where we don't have to see anybody else. But at least the car is being paid by the first floor. The, the mortgage is getting paid by the yes. second floor, right? That's what they said. Yes. Find an asset for every bill. Yes. Find yes. an asset for every bill so we could just live, sit back, you know? I'm just trying to chill and when I'm old and, and farm, you know, corn and tomatoes or something like I'm already thinking like how I'm going to be set up when I'm a grandfather, you know, and I believe in generational wealth because a lot of the people in my family, they just got fly for themselves, you know, and then the kids are like, oh, you 18, you're on your own, you know. Meanwhile, other cultures like the Caucasians and them, they set them up with businesses. They got them on authorized user cards. 
You know what I mean? Like they're setting them up. They're setting them up for life. They're setting them up to win. So what nationality are you? Dominican and Puerto Rican, 50-50. Yeah, okay. you know. Okay. And I'm I'm the one that taught my father how to put um my sister on the authorized card. Because I'm like, all right, look, you didn't do it for me. Do it for my sister. So that way when she's 21, 22, you don't got to sign off on that card. She could sign off for herself. You know what I mean? How old is your sister now? She's about 19 or 20 or something like that. My father's one of those alphas. He was a CO. He retired early, 55. You know, he comes from the school of the hard knocks, you know. But he's a, you know, he's a cool cat and stuff like that. Now we're speaking more about these things, about real estate and stuff like that. And, you know, my mother, she, 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 um, she gets upset sometimes. She was like, I'm sorry. I didn't know all this information. You know, like it wasn't, it wasn't brought down to it because my grandmother, my grandmother was very old school. She was on some tip like, oh, you got to work hard. And, and she doesn't believe in you getting extra money or, or being successful. She just, you know, she wants to like stay mid tier for some reason. I don't, she doesn't believe in having a lot. I don't know why, you know, and that's what she passed down to my mom and everybody. But my mom, I'm teaching her all this stuff about credit and houses because there's so much information out there. And I'm like, oh my, look at this. Look at what you could do. One extra payment a year on the house. You take off a whole decade. Like there's so much information. But to answer so your what, question, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Answer the question because I got I have another one. <laughs> to answer your question, um, both games are uh are like the telecommunication world and the real estate world are both saturated, but I could get a lot more money in real estate and there's a lot more. There's a lot more creative ways to get money yes. while I'm sleeping. You know what I mean? Yes. Passive income. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm trying to get. I need it. Now, it's, now you're teaching your mom, and your mom, your mom is. She almost started listening. crying, Regina. She she started crying when I was like when I was fixing her credit and all that. She was like, I can't believe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. she was wow. crying like she was like she couldn't believe it, and she was so she to this day she's like I'm so sorry I didn't have the information, but. Ma, they wasn't giving it out. You know what I mean? They were keeping right. it. They, there's, there's a reason they didn't let people read back then. You understand? Yeah. It was it was all designed that way. You know. So. So was it designed? Was it designed where your father? You know, because you you know you, you, your father retired at 55. He was he had to be. He's very smart. Not had to be. He's very smart, right? He, so he has the gift of God. So 55, had, 55 retiring. Mom is mom still working? Mom, mom's still working. Mom's still working. You know, she's at the title agency and stuff like right. that. But she's just trying to transition out right now. You know, she's trying to make her moves as well. So basically, does it sound like in your culture, the man, the man is the actually running, gets all the knowledge, and then the women, they don't get that knowledge? Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. In, in that culture... Um, the man goes out, gets the money, the woman stays home, cooks clean, and if she wants to get a job, she just help out a little bit, she could, and that's it. But as far as, like, letting her do things, and delegating stuff and handling stuff, it's, it's not, it hasn't been like that with a lot of the women. Like, now that you said that, I, I think about all my aunts, my cousins, it's like, yeah, the man is really like the man, you know? The only dominant woman is wow. my grandmother. She dominates my grandfather, hands down, on, on my mother's side. Like, Why do you she, think? She's the breadwinner because I don't think he really had like a, a, a school education and, okay. and she plays, she plays down on him on that. You know what I mean? But she pays for everything, but she plays him sometimes. <laughs> like not <laughs> plays him, but like, what? Like when she, when she, when I see her, when he calls, she's like, who's calling? Ah, uh, you can answer that. <laughs> you can answer that. I'm like, damn. Your grandmother, like your grandmother is still living? Yeah, she's, yo, she's a hustler, yo. Like, she retired, too, but sometimes she takes care of people on the side, too. Where is she retired from? Um, She was working as a, like, a, 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 re, a assistant nurse at a um, hospital. Yeah. Is everybody um originally from New York, New Jersey, or? Yeah. My grandmother used to live in the Bronx, then she moved to Queens. But everybody, um everybody was born in, in New York, and then my mother moved out to Jersey. She lives in Jersey, my stepfather's in Jersey, and then my grandmother, my both my grandmothers are in Queens, and my father's in Queens. Mm -hmm. So so what do you, so how, how many how many kids do you have? I have a boy and a girl. My my daughter's uh, 12 and my son's 10. It was just his birthday, the 29th. I got a boy and a girl. 
Are you in the market for a new or used car? Whether you're in the Metro Detroit area or anywhere in the U.S., call or text me at 248-301-0461. And I'll go to work on getting you the best deal possible. That's right. We'll deliver anywhere in the U.S. Call or text me at 248-301-0461. What, what are some things that you're going to instill in your kids that wasn't instilled in you as growing up, because it sounds like, well, it ain't no sounds like it is. You you have already created generational wealth, but just the things that you're saying that you're going to put into place. But Absolutely. what are you what are you going to instill in the kids so they're going to be a lot higher or on another level than what you are? That's what I want, and 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 I think that's the problem, right? Um, I'm going to answer both questions. I think that the men from our culture they want their sons to do good, but not better than them. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I want yes. you to be good, but I don't want you to be the man. I'm the man. And that's what mm. that's what I feel. That's what when I, because my father had me at 15, right? Mm. He was 16 years old. So I can't blame him. He was like a baby. So my thing is, is that my mom sees it now, but I always felt like they were competing with me. My stepfather, my father, you know what I mean? Not that they were competing because they had more, but I feel like, I felt that way. I, I just felt that way. I, they never said it, but I felt that way. What I'm going to instill in my kids, right? And my son and my daughter, I tell them all the time, I speak to them like they're my friends. And I, I try to instill uh, confidence, right? I think that the number one thing when they're that age is confidence, because if you don't have it, you could be steered the wrong way, right? So I try to explain to my son that, and my daughter, you know, just understand that you're a smart young boy. You're a smart young girl. Sometimes people are going to want to hang out with you. Sometimes people are not. Some people are good and some people are bad. You know what I mean? But you got to know what's the right thing to do and never let anybody else influence you. You know what I mean? Because you got your mom, you got your dad and all these people that support you. So if you ever feel lonely and you feel like you don't have somebody, just remember you have family, you know? But I think the number one thing for kids, they need to understand confidence. I don't, I don't think a lot of them are weak. I think like the newer generations, they're mentally like any 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 resistance they feel, they're they're quick to give up on stuff. You know, like even at even at my job at Verizon, they had a, a few cats that were like 20, 21 years old. The mm -hmm. first week of doing what we do at sales, they couldn't take the pressure, the quota, the metrics, the KPIs. They couldn't take it. It's too much. You know what I mean? Because some some people some people are made to be individuals to make a certain amount of hour, you know, that's or it. salary, and that's it. They want to do their job, they want to go home, and they want to be done. No, that's 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 a good thing because it gives most people like us more opportunity to be where we need to be. Less is more, you know. What's your son? What's your daughter's? What's their what's their names? Um, my my daughter's name is Amaya because because I like the Leah and Maya. So uh, Maya is like an apostrophe in between. So I like the Leah and Maya. So it's Amaya, Sophia, Tavares. And then my son, his name is Adarius. And then I named him Ace because there's so many, like the Ace in the deck of cards. Um, the Ace always beats the king. So, mm -hmm. you know, Ace is his name. So um, it was his birthday and um, on the uh, 27th. And uh, I got to go to his, his class, you know, bought him a cake. For all the kids pizza and you know goodie bags and all that stuff because you gotta imagine in the last two years these kids you know they they you know they didn't really have fun i remember just doing that and brightened up all those kids lives like they were so happy just to like have somebody do something for them you know what i mean yeah. and um the the whack part about that is with this whole covid thing i couldn't stay there long right because they got all these rules you, the parents can't stay and stuff you know, I, I just think that right now, me doing this podcast, everything that I say on my podcast, I have to actually do it in real life. Like if I say I'm gonna be a good why do you dad, say that? Why do you why do you why do you feel that way? Why do you think you gotta do it in real life though? Because the thing is, is that if I'm trying to lead by example and I'm trying to set examples, I actually have to do what I'm saying, you know. So, you know, being there for my kids. Um, it's so important because what I realized about the podcast that I'm doing, a lot of the effects of how we feel now come back from the childhood. Like everything, the way we act, everything goes back to parenting and 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 the effects that we had during our, our you know our childhood. 
And what I realized is that their, their time goes fast. So I'm like, yo, I got to be on top of them, at least from like one to 15. Like after 15, they're going to want to be with their friends and hang out. You know, I'm not cool enough no more or whatever. That's cool. But from one to 15, make sure that I'm there for my son and daughter, no matter what, because as a man, I could be successful and have all the money in the bank. But if I wasn't there for my kids in the back of my head, it's not going to sit right with me. It's something about my heart that like, I can't, I can't do bad stuff. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just like, I have to be there, you know, and my conscience won't let me, you know, go on if I don't do the right thing. So, yeah, I think I answered the question. Maybe I'm yeah, wrong. Yeah, what's the, what age is your son and your daughter? Uh, so it's the two age, right? Amari? Yeah, two, two years apart. Um, Amaya. Amaya? And, a, and Ace. Let's just say Ace. like that. Yeah, Amaya Ace. and Ace. Okay. Yep. So you said they're two years apart. So one's what age? 12 and another one's 10. 12 and 10. Okay, all right. It, it sounds like, you know, you you are you are paving the way and you are leading the way um, with your family. Not only are you touching your, you know, you're changing your, your mom's life. You know, you're teaching her yeah. some things that that she's going to be around to be able to um, what do you yeah. call she's going to be able to enjoy the fruits oh, yeah. of her labor or enjoy the fruits of her good credit. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's the perfect age. It's a 12 and 10. I don't have kids, but I have I have uh God kids, right? And then I got I got two God kids, and then I have um, which is is George and Camille. I think George is twenty eight, and Camille is um, how old is Camille? She's nineteen. I think June she'll be twenty, and um, she's in college at Oakland University. Then I have two two nephews. I have a bunch of nephews and nephews and nieces, but these are my college friends' kids. And one, his name is uh, Christian, and he's 17, he'll be 18 in April, graduating from high school this year. And then the little, other little one, his brother is Cam and he, he's playing basketball. I think Cam is like eight or nine years old. And so they're my, they're my family, they're my kids, right? And how you are instilling into um, you know, your kids, you know, I try to make an impression by instilling in, just giving them a little bit of, you know, instilling what, what I learned and what I've learned growing up and even as being an adult as being their extended auntie. You know, they call me TT, right? I remember I gave, uh, Christian had his first job with me. He was, um, let's see, 14, 15. He was 14 years old, 13 or 14. And that's when I had my my Facebook show. It was called The Bottom Line with Regina, the Queen of Carolines. And he actually, we had a um, a video, a bigger videographer that actually um, set us up where, we streamed live um, on Facebook and we had like commercials in between time, like a real TV show, but we did it on, um, on Facebook and Kristen, you know, got dropped off by his parents. we set everything up, make sure we get our water, make sure we are, are looking good. Just, just make setting the set up right with the videographer. So just, I didn't realize how much I instilled in him during the couple of years that he worked for me, wow. right? Yeah. And I I received a card from him because he's in a um, a mentor. He's in a um, he's a mentee. It's called I think Midnight Golf, and it's I think it's a bunch of like high school students, right? That they pick, that they select, and they pour into they they pour into the kids and. I received a, a, a car from him right before Christmas at work. And it, I mean, it came to work, not my house, but came to work. And it, he just he thanked me for pouring into him all those years and just told me how much he appreciated it. And I was like, man, it's I was important. like in tears. It's, it's, it's important. Like even you having him set up everything, it made him feel like, you know, I'm a part of this production. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's what I yes. do with my son. Like, you know, I got the green screens. I tested out with them. I actually made, um, we did a show just for them, right? Where I had my son on there. And, um, you know, just him seeing the graphics behind them and everything that I did, the effects, he was like, I'm like, yo, you could do this too. Like, I, I did it in front of you. I recorded you. I had you sit down next to me, show you that I could edit this thing. And look, we, we could make shows every day, you know? And him coming to the studio sometimes with me, on set, you know, I, I brought him to set like millions of times just so he could feel like, you know, what it is to 
to be on a part of a production, to be doing things that you like to do, not doing a job that you're just doing for money, but doing something that you actually like, you know, because they wanted to do a show. And then I come on, Dad, let's do a show and, and record it. I'm like, you have to plan what you're talking about first. So here's a piece of paper. Here's a pen. Come up with some topics. Then we're going to figure out which best topics we're going to speak about because it's a process of elimination. And then we go on the show. Like, then they started realizing, oh, okay, it's a process. We've got to come up with topics, plan it out. We can't just press record and have nothing to say yeah. and just think that we're yes. going to wing it. It's not like that. Yes. So I think what you did was was awesome. Even just having them a part of that was was really cool because I remember when people, you know, had me a part of things and I felt like, damn, I'm a part of this too. And then when you get older, I'm like, damn, like now I know you know, what they were doing back then, there was like, you know, they were a leader, you know what I mean? They were mm-hmm. delegating in the right way. And like you said, it poured into him and things poured into me as well. You know, even now, I feel like to this day, we're still all students. You know what I mean? Like I, I called you what yesterday? I'm like 36 years old and I called you yesterday. I'm asking for advice because yeah. I'm not afraid to to be like, yo, I don't know this. I don't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. You know, because um, when I was younger, I didn't know nothing about real estate. I didn't know anything. I was so afraid. Yo, I was so afraid to be at tables with some people. I'm like, well, please don't let them ask me about this because I don't know nothing about that. You know, and now put me in front of whoever. What do you want to talk about? Stocks, <laughs> real estate, cars, basketball cars, crypto, Turo, vending machines. What are we doing? Like, I could talk about all of it because I've seen all of it. I researched all of it. I dabbled a little bit and everything, you know. And then I, everything I looked at, I'm like, okay, we can't do all six things, right? My boy Jay Morrison, he said, Dave, you can't be like a machine gun. You got to hit your targets like a sniper, one at a time. Mm-hmm. Real estate, boom, rising, boom, podcast. You can't, mm-hmm. you know, so I had to, I, had, I, was, I was spreading myself thin. So I was like, okay, I got a nine to five. That's my partner. I need money to invest in the things mm-hmm. I want to do. I like what you said. That's my partner. I got a nine yeah. to five, but that's my partner. That's my partner. Yeah. And then it's like, I got the real estate and the podcasting. I'm just stick to those two. And that's what I want to do. Right. The foundation and my passion. And that's it. And then just transition out of Verizon because I'm not happy. Then. Like, I just, you know, when you lose that, it's kind of like Jordan. When he was like, I won six championships. I did this and that. Like, you know, I don't want to be manager because I see the manager is not you know, they don't have the things that I want. You know what I'm saying? When I go to a job, who's the best salesperson? Who makes the most money? Yeah, right? That's who I'm going to stick by. That's who I'm going to learn from. Right? But then when I see, you know, the checks coming in and stuff like that, I'm like, damn, but all that effort that person did, I feel like they should be getting paid more. You know what I mean? And it's just like, but they only give you enough so you could be happy, but not to defer and make you know, follow your dreams. They just give you enough. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I figured like when I'm talking about phones and stuff like that, the ambition ain't there no more. Like mm. if you don't want it, I don't care because it's like you want it or not. Like I'm not here to like, oh, please. Like, you know what I mean? Right. You want right. this or not? That's, that's it. Like this then the phones sell itself. Like everything else is like accessories that they force us to sell. Like with every phone, we have to sell at least $100 in accessories. Like mm-hmm. one case is like 60 bucks. You know what I mean? Can you imagine? That's why the push is so hard for the sales. Yeah. I got it. Now you just taught me something. Yeah. So they they got to hit their metrics. They got to hit their metrics. Yeah. You got you got features, the phone, the accessories. They, you have to hit all five targets. And if you don't, they get on you. Well, it's just like, it's just like cars. When we sell cars, you know, we, we sell your car. We, we want to sell you the aftermarket products. We want to sell you the time wheel. We want to sell you... Warranty, the warranty, gap insurance. You know, the gap. We want to sell all the back end products, all the all the aftermarket products that's gonna help you because that's our that helps go to the bottom line. So it's the same thing as in the car business. To me, when I look at sales, no matter what you sell, people buy from people. You know, I know when I go into that's a store, fact. I may say, you know what, I'm not buying that, or I'm just getting this and I'm gone. But if I meet the right salesperson, yeah, they're gonna end up talking me into getting that extra accessory or that extra, just buying something extra. And I only bought it because did that because honestly, their relationship, I'm gonna go in and get my product and be out.
But if you can catch my attention for more than five minutes, then I'm gonna buy whatever you, you put in front of me. Now nah, yeah. you're right. I think um what I learned was don't sell the product, sell the problem. I like right? that. When they don't sell the product, sell, sell the, problem. the problem. Yeah. So solve the problem. Right. So like, you know, for instance, um, like if I'm trying to sell a watch, right? We're speaking on telecommunication, right? The Apple Watch, right? If a person has a phone and I'm trying to sell a person a watch. What happens if your phone dies, Mr. Customer, and you don't have a charger and you need to make an emergency phone call, right? It's a pain point. Do you right? If, if I don't got my charger and my phone's there, I'm in a restaurant, nobody want to lend me a charger. The waiter's being a jerk. They don't want to give me a charger. I could text the person that's supposed to meet me at the restaurant through my watch. You right, David. I, I need that. You don't say, oh, this is the best new watch, the latest. No, no, no. If your phone dies, <laughs> Sell them the pain point. You know what I mean? That's just a, a small example. But, you know, there's plenty of examples. Pain value. That's, that's building. That's build. That's the pain Building value. That's building value. You're building value all day. I, yeah. I use that when I, when I talk about time will. First of all, I don't want time will. I'm like, okay. So I give an example. Me. I, I was driving my, I was coming home from work one day. Mm -hmm. And I took a different route home. I usually take this route home. I usually go the same way. Took a different route home. And um, I went down Telegraph, went Telegraph Southfield Road. Not yeah, no, went around Telegraph to 12 Mile. I hit a a a um a pothole. Mm -hmm. I made it to the gas station, but after I got to the gas station, it started my tire just started going down, going down, right? So a tire, I had to get the tire and I had to get the rim replaced. The rim is a thousand dollars. The tire is four hundred dollars, three to four hundred dollars. So I got time wheel. I paid, you know, because because I work at the dealership, I got it at cost. It was two ninety nine, right? So it being two ninety nine, I paid two ninety nine for time wheel on my lease truck for three years. If I hadn't had that, it would have cost me thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. Just just one time, and if that just one twice, time, if that one happened twice, time. wow, one time so you know you, you really really gotta you when, when i when i sell something if we do anything you gotta build value no matter what you know you gotta build value especially so those I, scenarios those scenarios like the one that you have described, all day. yeah i would use that all the time for those tires <laughs> you know, and, I, and i hope that yeah. anybody that's watching our the podcast know that anything you do you gotta back it up with value and anything when you got and you gotta protect yourself it's just like people yeah. don't think about getting, that's another thing I think that that's so important what you say, um, you know, what, what other coaches do, they, they have stuff in place to protect the money. You know, like there's insurance for like cars and phones, but there's also other things to protect the money. You know what I mean? Um, like I can't think of an example right now, but like life insurance is one of them, right? To protect the money. I know people put insurance on their best employee Sometimes they have like insurance on like their best employee. If that employee gets sick or something like that, they have, you know, uh, insurance on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I forgot what the term was called, but when I was taking um, insurance classes, because I was going to try to sell insurance, like I took so many certifications, it was just ridiculous. But what I learned from them is like, there's things in place that you could put to protect the money just in case things happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. And that's what I realized that, People don't think about that. They just think that's extra money wasted. But these people from other coaches, they're trying to secure their situation no matter what happens. Yes. So I got insurance on this. I got life insurance. Not only is my life insurance built in cash value, something happens, my family's taken care yes. of. Yes. Right? And that's the other thing I was trying to, um, not only protecting your assets, protect your family. You, yes. How many people you see with a GoFundMe? I, it's so embarrassing. It's the most embarrassing thing that I've ever seen, you know, but it's it, people, they don't take the time out to put $15 away a month. Are you crazy? Yes. Like, you know, you're going to leave your, your, your family with a $15,000 bill to bury you. You know what I mean? It costs yes. us to get buried, Regina. That's how real it is. And people don't even understand that, you know? So mm -hmm. there's so much that I learned in the last three to four years about generational wealth, about protecting ourselves and about changing the narrative that we need to do that.
you know, and there's people like yourself that I'm glad that I'm in the same groups and realms with people like you, because honestly, I see a lot of people sleepwalking out here. I ain't even going to lie to you. Like, I, they don't even know what they're trying to do. You know what I mean? Like, they just want to go to work and go home, like you said. And I can't live like that. You know what I mean? That's how that's how my life. Nobody's going to remember me, Regina, if I live <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? And who's going to remember me? At least I remember, you know, people are going to remember Regina that helped everybody. You know, yeah. I, I yeah. called her when I needed a car. Yeah. You know, she helped me start off with my production stuff. You know what I mean? Like, like the yeah. kids you were talking about. You know, like you don't even realize that you're helping people now and that you're impacting people now yeah. and what you're doing and what you're saying and people that is going to yeah. see this is going to help them out too. You know, yeah, I, I appreciate you calling me when you had that car question and because it's just to let people know that, you know, you have individuals like myself out there that you have that burning car question um, that you can give me a call. You know, it yeah, lady, ladies and gentlemen, I went to the dealership yesterday. And I went to purchase a car. The first person I thought about was Regina. I was like, yo, Regina, I know this guy is a shark. He's going to try to get me. What should I do? How should I approach the situation? And the first thing Regina told me was shop around. Right? The most, you know what I'm saying? The most simplest thing we don't even do. Right? Shop around. Why? Because we're already at the dealership. We don't want to drive to another one and another one. Yeah. But if you want the best deal, remember, you're going to be stuck with these cars for two, three years, five years. Who knows, right? And you got to make sure you're in, in, the, in the best position possible. This guy had me at a payment, like, $300 higher than what I left with. You know what I mean? Like, he was really trying. I left. I was ignoring his calls. I was playing the game. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he's probably with somebody else already. You, you know shot your trade, too, did yeah, you? Yeah. You shot your trade, right? Yeah, I was just, I was just yeah. you know... Reeling them in until I got them. And then we got them. We got every the price we wanted, everything. Um, so you know, thank you, Regina, for assisting me in that situation. You're welcome. And giving me my nice exotic blue Honda hatchback 2022. Hey, don't forget to again, <laughs> don't forget to do that video for me this week. I appreciate it because yes. I just want to let people know that you know we we are here for each other. That's all. You're in another state. I'm in Michigan. You're in uh you're in Queens, right? Queens, New York. Yes. So, yes, we can help each other. It doesn't matter where we are. But what's one last thing you want to share with the audience? Listen to yourself. Don't take advice from nobody else. Believe in yourself. Because I've done things that people were making fun of me at first, and then later on they copied me. So believe in yourself. And just know sometimes there's things you're going to do you're going to start with people. You might lose people along the way, but just stay focused on the mission mm. and, and, and stay faithful to that. And sometimes with your career and stuff like that, you kind of you have to be a little bit obsessive. Like if you want to win, you got to be obsessive with your um, with what you're doing. And, and I got that advice from Kobe. Kobe was just, you know, make sure whatever it is that you're doing, you got to like really love it. You know what I mean? You got to really be engaged in what you're doing and that's how you become successful so i want to thank regina for having me on the show i really appreciate you you know um for having me like one of the first ones or i probably am the first one and i i just want to let everybody know if you have any advice about cars it doesn't matter if you're in new york cali or detroit you could ask her for that advice now some dealerships don't even have the cars that you want on the on the lot, but you could always reach out to Regina and you could get a car sent to you, right? Yes, Am I wrong? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for that commercial. <laughs> Have a good one, Regina. Thank Bye, you. you Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of the No Limiter Podcast with Regina Eileen Wooder. Remember to subscribe and review the No Limiter Podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and the No Limiter Podcast YouTube channel. Every listen and review helps to get this podcast out to as many No Limiters like you as possible.